Hello, welcome to the Equipping Godly Women podcast, where we challenge, encourage, and equip Christian women to be all in in faith and family. Today on the podcast, we are speaking with Holly Girth, co-founder of Encourage and author of the brand new book, The Powerful Purpose of Introverts, Why the World Needs You to Be You. In today's interview, Holly is sharing a ton of encouragement, whether you're an introvert yourself or you're more of an extrovert, as well as a ton of practical tips and tricks that you can use to live into this person that God created you to be all the more fully. She also shares about a very fun introvert quiz she has on her website where you can figure out what percent introvert you are. And Holly and I both share what percent introvert we are on the show. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in learning more about, whether it is living up to your full potential as an introvert or loving the introverts in your life, well, I really hope you'll stay tuned. All right. Well, Holly, thank you so much for coming on the Equipping Godly Women podcast to talk with us today. Can you get us started just by telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do? Sure. I'm an author. I had grandparents who had a little Christian bookstore when I was growing up, and so I was that little kid with a big stack of books dreaming of writing one day, and thankfully that has gotten to come true. I'm also a counselor and life coach and a mama and Nana. We have a crazy family story. Our daughter came into our lives when she was 20 and she's now 27. So we have a granddaughter and a grandson too. So yes, (laughs) not at all the way we pictured it, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. Well, tell us some more about your new book that you have coming out really soon because I'm so excited to talk about this. Yes, it's called The Powerful Purpose of Introverts, Why the World Needs You to Be You. So I'm an introvert. I learned that in college, and it was a huge aha moment for me. But for years, I felt like I mostly understood what being an introvert wasn't. Like, I didn't love small talk. I didn't want to be in big crowds all the time. But as I really dove into the research, I discovered there's this whole other side to the story that's not being told about the strengths and gifts and potential of introverts. And so that's what this book is about, about really taking hold of who God created us to be, because I think our world needs introverts more than ever before right now. Yeah. And it's a wonderful time to be an introvert, especially with the (laughs) pandemic and all the things that are going on right now. Like I am in my happy spot. I'm an introvert as well, but I'm in my happy spot here at home with the kids are in school and just me in my little house. And my husband's here too, but it's nice. nice Yes. I've heard from a lot of introverts. They're like, I feel freer than I ever have in my whole life because all of a sudden we're able to set down some social obligations. You know, I think we miss our people, our inner circle, but as far as just feeling so much pressure to be social all the time, I think it is a relief for a lot of us introverts. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, I know you have a really fun introvert quiz on your website where you can tell what percent of introvert you are. I was wondering what percent did you get when you took your quiz? I got 96%. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah. How about you? 90. So I thought I was pretty high up there, but wow. 96. You are high up there. Yeah. Because we're all on a continuum. So yeah. A minute ago, you had said that growing up you as you were learning about what an introvert is that you defined it more in terms of what introverts are not like we don't like small talk we don't like this or we're not good at this can you go into a little bit about what is a good definition of what is an extrovert versus what is an introvert because i would imagine most people have heard of the terms and have some familiarity with them but um, i would love a really good definition of okay what is an introvert since we know what they're not Yeah, well, Susan Cain, who wrote the book Quiet, says it's a preference for minimally stimulating environments, which I think is a good definition. I would add to that that an introvert who's someone who is at their best when they can fully focus on one thing at a time, whether that's a person or a few people they love, a project, their inner world. We do best when we can really focus because it's being an introvert and extrovert is not really about people at all. It's about how we engage with our external environment and introverts and extroverts differ in our neurotransmitters, the side of the nervous system we use and our primary brain pathways. 
And so it is how we're wired. And so when I look at the creation story, which is full of all these complementary pairings, day and night, land and sea, masculine, feminine, I think introvert, extrovert is another one of those complementary pairings that God intentionally designed both types of people because we make each other better. Yeah. Can you tell us some of what are the specific strengths of an introvert? Like, why would that be a good thing to be an introvert? A lot of times introverts are highly empathetic and or observant. So our nervous systems are like nuts with tiny holes. We are taking in things all the time. We catch everything. If we're more emotionally wired, that probably looks like catching that flicker of pain that goes across our friend's face before anyone else does. For more kind of a logical thinker, it's that we're catching that one detail of the project that's off. So I think that's a real strength. We have a tremendous capacity for reflection. We actually need more time to process because we use a longer brain pathway. But that brain pathway goes through several areas include, that include the past, present, and future. And so when we give ourselves time to process as introverts, we bring a lot of depth and insight and context to the conversations we're in, which I think our world needs so much right now. And then I think that we are great at leadership. It just looks different. I say introverts are great at leading from behind. And so we will champion a person, a cause, a project that we believe in and get behind it and make it happen. And so I think those are the most influential people in our lives a lot of the times, not the ones that are most visible, but the ones who add the most value to our lives. So I have a lot more strengths in my book, but those are three that come to mind first. Yeah. And one thing that really stuck out to me from what you said is how introverts just need the extra time to process. Um, that's something that I've seen in my own life so much. And especially once I realized that it was so much easier to say, okay, this is a need for me. I need time in silence. I need time to myself. Like I'm not being antisocial. I'm not trying to, it's not that I hate my family because I love them, but sometimes I just need time that I can process. And I've gotten in that habit as well, where I will go, even this morning, just go on a bike ride, go on a walk, do anything just to have that time. Um, what are some practices that you have done in your life that you implement on purpose because you're an introvert? Yeah, I also go on walks. I do journaling. I spend time even, it's not exactly solitude, but meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations with people are close to that for me. And I think just incorporating it into our daily lives, which like you said, starts with giving ourselves permission. I say that solitude is not selfish, it's a sacred act of service. And it's different than isolation. So in, when God created the world, then he says, it's not good for man to be alone. That's the first time he says something's not good. So I thought, uh oh, I'm not supposed to spend time alone as an introvert. But I looked into the actual meaning of that word, and it means living in separation and isolation. It is an emotional and spiritual term, not a physical one. So as introverts, we can actually feel the most connected to God, our true selves, and others when we are in solitude. And then we come out of that to be able to better connect when we have that time. And so introverts can let go of that guilt and know that solitude is actually a spiritual discipline that the church practiced for thousands of years. And we have just gotten a little lost from that in our current culture. So I think it's even important for introverts to embrace that, to give other people, even extroverts, because they needed to, permission to take that time. And so that can look like either scheduled solitude, pulling out your calendar and scheduling it like a meeting, even if it's just 10 minutes, or it can look like a rhythm, like Joanna Gaines, who's probably one of the busiest women on the planet, also an introvert, says before she goes into something new, she just sits in her car for five minutes, and that works for her. Or you lock yourself in the bathroom for five minutes, whatever's manageable. And then the other is sustainable solitude, which is just telling ourselves, it is okay that I need this. More than okay. This will empower me to be at my best for the people in my life. Yeah, that is, I've been loving the practice of solitude this year, especially with quarantine and COVID and all the things that are going on and people in the house. It's like, I just have to have that time, but I've seen so much fruit come out of that. Um, 
and it has been wonderful. What tips do you have for maybe an introvert married to an extrovert who needs that time, but then the spouse doesn't understand? Yes, I think explaining a little bit, like this is how I'm wired. It's not about me choosing not to be with you. It's about being intentional in some other ways that you will get the best of me if I'm able to have this time. And I think that often what extroverts, we think that we, they want an instant answer or for us to do something with them right in that moment. But what they really want is to know that they've been heard and that they value and they matter. And so a lot of times just validating that, like if they want an answer from us about something right away, we could say, what you just said matters to me so much that I need a little time to think about it because I want to give my absolute best to responding to you or saying, you know what, I'm going to go on a walk for 30 minutes, then I'll be back, and you and I can watch a movie together. So sort of telling them, I'm going away for this little bit of time, I will be back at this time, and here's what we can do together. Just so they know that it's not about being apart from them, it's just about recharging our batteries. Yeah. What about what tips would you have for moms of families where they have little kids? It's so difficult to have any time to yourself. You mentioned locking yourself in the bathroom earlier, which I think is hilarious <laughs> um, because so many of us have done that. But what other tips do you have also for moms with families who they constantly need something, constantly asking, how can she get some time to recharge by herself? Yeah, I think one strategy that I've heard from moms with little kids is to swap with another introvert mom <laughs> and say, okay, I'll take your kids for an hour a week if you'll take mine for an hour a week. And that way we both get a little bit of time to ourselves. So that's one strategy. You know, having quiet time, just be part of the rhythm of your household, saying from 2 to 2.30 every day, we have quiet time in our house. And that means you can read, you can be in your room, you can do, ever, do whatever you want, just that's quiet time in our house. And so helping your kids learn the power of reflection too, and that solitude even at a young age. And then, you know, communicating with your spouse or whoever's sharing your home that you're just going to need backup sometimes, that every once in a while it's going to mean you just need to get in the car and drive away for 15 minutes and then come back a better person. And so I think starting with the minimal amount of solitude, you need to stay sane. We often think it has to be this big thing that I need four hours or I have to go away for a weekend or, and then it feels just impossible. So saying if the minimum I need to be sane <laughs> is 10 minutes, then what's a creative way for me to get that today? And then going from there. I want to ask you as well. We've been talking a lot about, okay, here's how you make time to go away and be by yourself. But I know for most Americans, I would imagine because we're in a culture where everything is so noisy and constantly on and we're doing a million things, we are not in the practice or habit of being able to slow down and have quiet. So do you have any tips or advice of, okay, so a mom says, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set aside 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to go be by myself. Does this mean that she has to go just sit on her bed in complete silence for 15 minutes and like bore to tears because she's not used to it? Or are there other things she could do? Do you have any advice of how she should use this time or any advice of how she should not use this time? I think whatever is restorative to you. And so if that means you like to bake or you like to paint or you want to be outside and go for a walk, just ask yourself, what is restorative to me? Because I think there's passive rest that we need, and that looks like I'm going to take a nap, you know? But there's also an active rest where we're doing something that fills us up again. And introverts need that. Psychologists call it flow, and it's when we are at our best, when we kind of reconnect with our true self. It's whatever we're doing that we're so engaged in that we lose track of time. And so I would say pause and write down what those things are for you so that you have a menu. So that when you're like, oh, the kids are at a friend's house. I suddenly have half an hour to myself. What do I do? Instead of just grabbing our phones, which is easy to do, or tackling the next thing on our household to-do list, we can pick up that list and say, is there something on here that I can incorporate 
into my day, but there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever is restorative for you. Yeah. I've noticed that that was something that I had to do in my life earlier this year when I was like, okay, I need this time of doing something restorative. I need some kind of recharging. What do I even like to do? I don't even remember. It's been so long. So having to like think back, what are the hobbies I used to enjoy? What kinds of things do I love to do? Um, and just to have those in your mind as an option. So we're not, like you said, just constantly like, oh, scroll on the phone, scroll on the phone, find something on TV. Um, but knowing what those are. And I found that for me, like I love walking, I love running. And that doesn't seem like it's something that would be restful because I'm literally like out running miles. Um, but for me, it is so restful just to have silence and just the rep repetitiveness of running just allows me to kind of get in that state where I can talk to God or just let my mind wander. Um, and that's something that's so restorative for me that I know wouldn't be for everybody. Um, but you just have to find the thing that works. Is there hobbies that you love that you find restorative? Do you have examples? I would say walking and actually writing, you know, which is interesting because it's my work. And so for a while, I was like, that can't be restful for me because it's work. But it actually is. Like when I start to go sideways, my husband's like, you need to go write. <laughs> like go away to a coffee shop and write until you feel better and then come home. So even looking at our work lives is okay. But that's a rhythm for me. Having coffee with friends or right now Zoom calls where I can process you know, I think as introverts, we need that time to reflect, but at some point we can also kind of get stuck in our own heads and we need to process with someone we trust in a way that helps kind of empty some of that out. So that's something I try to intentionally incorporate into my life. I do love to bake. And so, you know, doing something with my hands when so much of my work is thinking and that kind of work. They, I heard a proverb that said, if you work with your head, rest with your hands. If you work with your hands, rest with your head. So if you are someone whose brain is always working really hard, then doing some with the, something with your hands, like baking or crafts or something like that can be really restorative because it taps into a different part of you. And so I try to think about that too, that if I've been using my head way too much, what can I switch and do with my hands? Have you read or heard of Sacred Rest by Sandra Dalton-Smith? Yes. You're just yes. reminding me of that book, talking about this. We had her on the podcast like a long time ago when that book first came out, but she was talking about all the different types of rest, just like you were um, yeah, so and I thought that was book. something that was really helpful as well, too, that I purposely, okay, if I am writing, writing is not restful for me. Um, I do it, it's important. But if I'm writing, then I need to make sure that my rest is something different for me. But I think it's just a matter of figuring out for every yeah. person what is restorative. Yeah, you know? just experimenting until you figure out what fits you. So I wanted to ask you, do you think that – if we are introverted or extroverted, that it, we are like set that way for the whole rest of your life, that's just what you are, you can never change, or do you think it's something that changes over time or something that we could potentially, if we wanted to, try to change and be something else? So there have been a lot of studies that have followed babies from birth, and even as little kids, you know, one years old, they already exhibit introvert and extrovert ways of engaging in the world. And so they follow them into adulthood and that stays consistent. So based on that, and then what I talked about, how it's really built into us, into our, our brains and nervous systems, I believe we're all on an introvert, extrovert continuum. So on that continuum, research shows we all become more introverted as we age, which is interesting. But I don't think we cross the line and become the other type because it is so wired into us. And I say it's like being right or left-handed. You know, we use both our hands all day, every day. But there are certain tasks or situations that we are just naturally going to use one hand. And if we try to use the other, it's just not going to feel as comfortable or natural. And so I think that's how it is with being an introvert or extrovert, that we can all tap into both sides of how we're wired. There's just one that's going to be more natural and a bigger source of our strengths than the other. And the next question I was going to ask you ties right into that, but you were talking about in different situations. Do you think it's possible that somebody could be more introverted in one kind of situation and then a total extrovert in a different kind of situation? 
Yes, a lot of times introverts look like extroverts when they are in a role or supporting a cause they're passionate about. So someone may look like an extrovert at work because they're managing and they're really passionate about the work they're doing. And then in their leisure time, they're like, I'm ready for some solitude, you know, or vice versa. Maybe someone is an extrovert all day long. And then in another scenario, they're like, I just want to be and not have to engage for a while. And so I think that is one thing in particular that can keep people from realizing they're introverts because they sort of have this blip on their, their screen where they're like, I totally act like an extrovert in that situation, so I can't be an introvert. But that's actually really common that in particular situations, introverts look like extroverts. It's just not what we want to do all the time in every situation. Yeah, I've seen that in my own life as well. Like I used to be a waitress or I could go to a Christian women's conference and I can go be very social and talk. I used to be a teacher for a short while. I can get up in front of people and that doesn't bother me at all. But put me in a situation where I have to small talk with a stranger yeah. and that is like <laughs> the worst ever. Um, just because I'm like, I don't know what to talk about. That's really awkward. Um, so I love how you say that you can be one or the other in different situations um, because I feel like that is something that would really trip people up if they're confused about that. Yeah. And so, the, oh, go ahead. And the reason that introverts don't love small talk is because of that brain pathway I mentioned. So extroverts have a shorter, faster brain pathway they use that focuses on the present moment. And so that's why they can do that small talk quick back and forth really easily and comfortably. Whereas, like I said, we have that longer, more complex brain pathway. And so we need that little bit of extra time to process. Like often the introverts will say, I thought of what I wanted to say when I got in the car or, you know, after they switched topics and suddenly I had the perfect response. And so that's what's going on. So just realize Realizing that it's actually a strength that's just annoying in certain situations that we are not slow thinkers we're deep thinkers and so that's why that particular situation just isn't quite as much fun as it is for extroverts but it also is tied to this really great strength that, that we have yeah I've seen that as well when people want an answer for me and I'm like I literally don't know I'm gonna have yeah. to think about that yeah Even for easy questions I'm like I don't know so tell us some more about your book. Um, I'm very excited for this. Can you tell us some more about what people are going to find in it, who it's for, where they can find it? Yeah, I say that it is for introverts or people who love, lead, or share life with one. It's been really fun to have conversations with readers who are extroverts who have gotten early copies and say, this was transformational for my marriage or for my work or whatever it is. So Anyone who wants to understand more about what it means to be an introvert, I specifically go into nine different strengths of introverts and also the struggles that tend to go along with those. So if you're someone who really wants to know how to maximize your God-given strengths, how to get really clear on your purpose, if you've ever had self-doubt because of being an introvert, then I want to untangle some of those myths and help you have the truth of who God made you and why we need you to be you. And so I unpack all of that. It's full of brain science, a lot of research. I sent out a survey to my blog subscribers and got over 2,000 responses. So it's from real people to speaking into it. And yeah, I hope it is a book that will be full of transformational aha moments for people. That's what happened as I wrote it. It was transformational for me personally, just realizing, okay, I am who I am by design, and it's okay to fully lean into that. Yeah, that's beautiful, because I feel in this world, we have so many voices who are telling us, like, you need to be this way, you should do this, you should do this, and it's just so refreshing to hear, okay, God made you this way for a purpose, on purpose, for a reason, um, and be that person. So that's so beautiful and inspirational. Um, before we close for our time today, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Anything that you wanted to say that you didn't have a chance to mention? I think what you just said, you know, let's all embrace who we are and become all God created us to be because I think we are better together. And in our noisy, overwhelming, chaotic world, I think introverts offering all of who they are is going to be a big part of what brings healing. 
and wholeness and some things we really need right now. So I wrote this book for individual introverts, but I also wrote it for the world at large because I think we are here for such a time as this. And that's really exciting. And I'm glad I get to do that with my extrovert brothers and sisters, because when we are all fully who we're made to be, then I think we fully reflect the image of God. And that is powerful. Well, thank you so much, Holly, for being on the show today and for sharing all of your thoughts and wisdom with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. And people can stop by hollygirth.com slash introverts for more about that book, the little quiz you said, and uh, keep adding resources that will equip introverts there too. All right, so that just about does it for today's interview. If you would like to learn more about Holly's brand new book, The Powerful Purpose of Introverts, Why the World Needs You to Be You. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. I will leave a link where you can check out Holly's brand new book. And if you are watching this live and you go over and check it out very soon, um, she does have a ton of pre-order bonuses that are still available, but only for a very limited time. So if you're interested, go ahead and make sure you check those out right away so you don't miss out on that. Also, I will leave you a link to the introvert quiz that she has on her website so you can find out what percent introvert you are. See if you can be our high score of 90 and 96. I know that's pretty tough to do, but it'll be fun to try. And last but not least, if you have not subscribed to the Equipping Godly Women podcast yet, what are you waiting for? We come back all the time with inspiring interviews to help you be all in in faith and family, and I know you won't want to miss them. So go ahead, subscribe today. Go check out Holly's brand new book and her quiz. I know they're going to be so helpful for you. And I'll see you back here real soon. All right. Bye.